fast as lightning, sharp as a sword. Greetings YouTube, I'm Lightning Sword, and welcome to my first review. Today I'll be taking a look at the first episodes of My Little Pony Season 6, The Crystalling, Parts 1 and 2. Bear in mind, these are my opinions. If you disagree, that's fine, I won't hold it against you. But remember, my channel, I do what I want. I'll be honest, you guys, after the Season 5 finale, lots of people, including myself, were dreading this one. Considering that the guy who wrote this is the same guy behind the cutie remark, it's safe to have reservations. But this is a new season, so it might just surprise us. Well, let's get started. We begin with... Uh, Starlight Glimmer wandering around in Twilight's castle. Now, bear in mind that this is the same pony that, in the last episode, broke into Twilight's house used a dangerous bit of magic to throw Twilight and Spike back in time, bring about the equestrian apocalypse seven different ways, and had no other defense for her actions except for my friend moved away. Yeah, that's Starlight Glow. So, what's she up to now? I still can't believe you're letting me stay here. Because you're a pupil. After everything I did. <sighs> You know, to be honest, I can't believe it either. So Twilight tells Starlight to meet up with the others in the throne room while she gets things set up for her first friendship lesson. Throne room, got it! Um, which way is the throne room? <laughs> oh, right, like you don't know where the throne room is. Anyway, the group is discussing the upcoming crystalling of Shining Armor and Cadence's new foal. Oh, sweet delicious continuity. Spike explains that the crystalling is meant to join the new foal's life force with the crystal heart, or something, and increase the crystal's protective magic. Protective from what? Uh, you know, the usual power mad lunatics, like you. Anyway, Twilight has three options for Starlight's friendship lesson, and one of them, we were all expecting this, is a reunion with her childhood friend Sunburst. I know this will sound unbelievably petty, considering I don't much care for Starlight Glimmer or the ease of her forgiveness, but... Of course, that's just one idea. We could also go to Griffin's Dome. Making friends with a Griffin is a challenge all by itself. Or we could tag along with the skin the next time they try to help a boy and bring her up by their special. Starlight? This was the best scene in the whole episode, period. Ride, you little shrew. I'm just not very fond of her, that's all I'm trying to say. So, after getting lost some more, Starlight finds Spike and explains why she's so nervous. Again, we get more of this stupid, lame, my friend moved away crap, and... You blamed cutie marks and stripped a whole village of theirs, and when Twilight and the others stopped you, you went back in time and almost destroyed Equestria. Damn, Spike is on point tonight! So Starlight is sure Sunburst has made a good life for himself in the Crystal Empire as a big, important wizard. Oh, and spoiler warning, evidently, important wizard is the legal job description, because they use it throughout the entire episode! Wizard new important wizard! Important wizard! I important wizard! Important wizard! An important wizard! You're an important wizard! Important wizard! Important wizard! Important wizard! Important wizard! Important wizard! Five minutes in, and I'm already expecting season six to go belly up. Anyway, they get personal invites to come to the Crystalling, so the gang is hot on the track to the Crystal Empire. On what I've heard some fans call the Exposition Express. Are you kidding? This trip is perfect! Not only do I get to see the baby and take part in the ceremony that helps maintain the magic of the Crystal Empire, but I'm starting my new pupil off with the most amazing friendship lesson ever! I can't wait! For those of you who are lost, let me translate. Not only do I get to see the new character and take part in the MacGuffin ceremony, but I'm furthering the development of the most half-assed character arc ever. I can't wait. Um, Applejack, what is that? Oh, just a little something for the youngin. Stop talking to yourself. Anyway, Twilight and the group arrive at the station and are greeted by the proud Papa, Shining Armor. You all right? Never better. Being a father is amazing and wonderful and amazing and confusing and amazing, but surprising too, you know? I mean, not that you'd know. You wouldn't know, I know. You know? 
I uh, wish my dad was that charming after I was born. It sure would be great to get a break. You're a father. The word break is now exclusively defined as damage. So, the group splits up. Twilight takes the rest of the main six to the castle, while Spike escorts Starlight to Sunburst's house. They've taken care of everything. Everything, except how I'd rather do absolutely anything else. Yeah, and whose fault do you think that is? So, on their way there, what better way to show that Starlight is still a manipulative cretin than to have her stroke Spike's ego? Hey, is that you? Oh, yep, it sure is. Why is there a statue of you in the Crystal Empire? Because Spike, the brave and glorious, saved all of us from King Sombra, and then again during the Equestria Games. Really? Really. Big fan. Nah, it's no big deal. It most certainly is! Well, this looks like it's gonna take a while. So, why don't we jump back to the heroes? I should probably tell you, seeing the baby might be a bit of a shock. Come on, big brother. I've met babies before. I expect meeting this one won't be any different. Well, warning you now, Twilight. Only fools are positive. <gasps> the baby is an alicorn? Of course it's an alicorn. It's female. So the shock slowly wears off as the equestrian diarchy explains that even they weren't born as alicorns. Not a huge deal, except... <laughs> that kid is OP as all hell! And when Daddy starts hilariously panicking over his to-do list, Twilight offers to stay behind with Pinkie Pie to help watch the little... HOLY CRAP! Okay, what kind of shrink do I have to see to scrub that image out of my mind forever? Anyway... Now that Spike's ego has had a proper hoof job, Starlight has expended her stalling tactics. And now is the time to go see Sunburst. Let the awkwardness begin! It's... it's me, Starlight. We used to be friends? Uh, of course! S Starlight! <laughs> My goodness, it's been a long time. What, uh, what have you been up to? Me? Oh, you know, some of this, some of that, different stuff. Yeah, you know, brainwashing, trespassing, revenge, time terrorism. You? Right, uh, well, good to see you. That should have happened a lot sooner. Meanwhile, Armor's lack of sleep makes him a klutz, so preparing for the crystalling is going a bit slowly. Back at the bungalow, things aren't going much smoother. The little pink bundle of destruction is now showing us that she's better at flying and magic than both the Cake Twins. She's a better flyer than Pound? Oh, come on! And we're back to dinner for schmucks. Well, I don't understand. Did something happen to you after I left for magic school? You want the list alphabetically or in descending length of prison sentence? Well, never mind that. Let's get back to the plot. Armor's a lot calmer now that things are squared away. Okay, I chose the honor guard, picked the purity crystal, and I know exactly who I want to be our crystaller. So, all we need is... The baby? Good call, Mom! Still gonna call bullshit on that one. So, now that playtime is over and the baby has to spend a little time away from Auntie Pinky, the little tyke feels the need to huff and puff and... <laughs> blow the crystal heart down. I knew that kid was on crack. Get it? Crack. Cause, you know, the crystal heart. Cracked. These are the jokes, people! Now, anyone who remembers the Season 3 opening will remember what happens when the Crystal Empire lacks a crystal heart. Without the heart, the Crystal Empire is about to be buried under a mountain of ice and snow. Well... 
shit. So that was the first half of the crystalline. Honestly, it wasn't too promising. Starlights are regular now, the exposition is too heavy, the mainstay characters seem a bit thinner than usual, and the plot isn't that exciting. But it had funny moments, like Shining Armor being a manic mess, and they at least addressed that Starlight did something wrong in the last season. Unlike a certain traitor who evidently isn't. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little look back. As I said, my opinions only. If you think differently, let me know in the comments section. If you like the video, you know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, all that some such. I'll put up my thoughts on the second half soon, but until then, this is Lightning Sword. Stay quick, stay sharp, and thanks for watching.